what you think about this grain deal? Is it good for Ukraine? Is it bad? And uh, uh, how this problem could be solved? We need a way to export our grain. It's about our economic resilience because the most important uh, to win on the battlefield, but to get this win, to get this uh, ultimate victory, we need uh, resilience of our economy. And it's also about grain export, but there should be a very clear red line here, no compromise on our security. And uh, we all heard about uh, Russian uh, missile attack on the Odessa port today in the morning. And many people don't see any logic here. But uh, there is a clear logic by the Russian regime. And the logic is to further raise the stake and to show everybody, look, uh, what uh, we've got is not enough. Now we need to further raise the stakes. We need a discussion about further weakening up sanctions. And everything which uh, will be happening in the future depends on us. So we are in the driving seat. It's the idea of the Kremlin. And now it's about all of us getting together, of course, us, Ukraine, the Turks, the West, and uh, to clearly come up uh, with the answer for Putin, saying, no, 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 no. Now it's about us being tough. There is no way how you further raise the stakes. And if you don't stick to, uh, to this agreement, we, we're going to also raise the stake. And it's going to be about different security arrangements. It will be about uh, NATO ships uh, and Turkish ships uh, directly present uh, in the western part of the Black Sea. And it's the only way how to ensure security. So there should be a bold, a clear answer to this uh, Russian provocation today in the morning. What do you think? Why Putin uh, commits a blatant uh, violation of this agreement immediately after this agreement was signed? It's his way to raise the stakes. So to get something and say, no, no, now it's not enough. We need, we need more and more, we need more weakening of the sanctions, we need better positions, we need uh, to press uh, you, we need to press the Turks, we need to press the rest. It's his normal way of negotiating. He's negotiating not as a sort of uh, normal guy sticking to the rules. It's a completely different set of values. It's now understandable for, for everybody. It's not about European values and Putin can be trusted. You can talk to Putin only from the point of strength. It's why my point about clear joint answer by us, by the collective West and by the Turks. It's the only way. Thank you. Yeah, I have also a question about the previous uh, visit of uh, Lavrov to Africa. Next week he will, he will plan visit the uh, African countries. So I heard the messages from Timothy Snyder in Germany. He mentioned that Ukraine now should be more actively on the fight way uh, for attention from global south. And now we see that Lavrov has a plan to visit more deeply the countries to involve them to the agenda maybe. So what is your vision, view on the situation and relations between Ukraine and the global south? How to build this track? The Russians uh, keep manipulating non-Western world. And we have 100% uh, support within the Western world. But many people uh, in Africa, in Asia, clearly support us uh, emotionally. But politically, they see what's going on as a big geopolitical picture. So we need uh, to turn to them. We need to convince them that it's not about NATO enlargement, it's not about geopolitics. It's about uh, our way of life. 
it's about uh, our free choice, uh, it's, about, uh, it's about Ukraine. And it's basically why I support uh, all this clearly talking to the non-Western world. Uh, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky uh, has been doing it uh, to the South Africa, to Asia. We need to more actively embrace Africa. We need to more actively talk to them in the sense of presenting this war as actually anti-colonial war. It's going to be understandable for, the, for, for many African nations. And to push uh, our narrative, to clearly say we are humans. It's about us uh, to export grain, uh, but it's about the Russians blocking everywhere and using it as a pure blackmail. And uh, the key challenge is to get to everyone, to every African country, to every Asian country, to find the right narrative, to explain and to keep this track. And uh, it's one of the most important points enjoying such a 100% level of support uh, within the Western world does not mean that support in any part of the world is ensured. We have to pull it off. It's our challenge. And the last question. Maybe you know who could be the next uh, ambassador of Ukraine to Germany <laughs> and <laughs> about his style. <laughs> what <Diplomatic> style. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, will it be uh, the same style like Melnik, uh, or we need some, some another diplomacy? Even, even if I know, I, I'm not going to uh, you know, tell you, because uh, it's, a, it's a prerogative of the president <laughs> to sign <laughs> a relevant decree. Uh, what is important uh, in, uh, in Germany? It's important to push Germany for more leadership. It's, a pu it's important to push uh, Germany for more weapons supply. It's important to push Germany for training. My simple point, look guys, of course it's about weapons, but many nations uh, are training uh, Ukrainian militaries. You have facility, you have resources. Uh, why are not you training us? Why are not you helping us in any, in any other way? But it's of course about economy. It's, uh, we need to re-energize Germany. We need to explain uh, no future status quo with Russia is possible. You should be either of the part of the collective West or you lose the sense of leadership uh, of Germany. Uh, well, fairly speaking, uh, I don't believe uh, as ambassadors, uh, as uh, people sitting in, uh, so to say, driving seats, the car, you know, current uh, diplomacy pattern is about uh, capitals talking to each other. But uh, emotionally, ambassadors uh, are still uh, very important. So the future ambassador, whoever it could be, should enjoy trust and sympathy in Berlin. It's a fundamental point. And it's about uh, right choice, and I believe in the right choice. We are in the war with, uh, with Russia, and, and we need this sense of sympathy and support from Germany. Mm -hmm. How do you think, uh, is, it, uh, is it true when uh, Germany uh, authorities say that we could, cannot help you immediately because of economy, because of other issues, or it's something they do not want to do it uh, in fast way? It's both. Uh, because uh, they need gas, they are dependent on Russian gas like Jenkins. Mm -hmm. It's because of uh, many mistakes they committed uh, in dealing with Russia. And they can simply reject Russian gas like that from today to tomorrow. We have to be fair. But of course, uh, they can do more. And not only on weapons. I, I, as I've said, on economic resilience, on helping uh, Ukraine uh, uh, on the economic front, uh, on leading on other issues. Uh, so it's one, two, three, five. Basically, uh, we can all come up with, uh, with a simple list. So, uh, of course, we, uh, we can't afford uh, losing 
the level of support in Germany. Now 75% of Germans are so supportive for us, for Ukrainians. And if uh, all the bills uh, go, go up, go higher, how it going to impact uh, this sense of sympathy? Well, it's a challenge. But uh, we need to be creative uh, and we need to push Germany to lead uh, where it has to lead. And it's not just uh, about weapons, but of course about, uh, about weapons uh, in, the first, uh, in the first sense, clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.